Band of Brothers is iconic. Any person who has an interest in World War II has seen this show, and they love it. And I'm guessing, since you clicked into this video, you have too. In this video, I'm not going to give you a plot synopsis of this show, since the show has been out for 20 years. Instead, I want to go into why this show became so legendary, and why people still talk about it as the gold standard of World War II storytelling. I want to start with the three major factors that I see as this show's greatest strength. The first one is storytelling structure. The way they design the story of Band of Brothers is so unique, and it makes the series flow extremely well. Instead of the traditional approach most shows take, of following one main character and then having some side characters sprinkled in, Band of Brothers doesn't have a true main character. Now, you could argue that Dick Winters is the main character, but he isn't a main character in the traditional sense, or at least not in my opinion. Because for a variety of episodes, he really isn't the primary focus. He comes in and out of the narrative, while other members of Easy Company take center stage. However, Winters is definitely the closest the show gets to having a single central character, and Damian Lewis absolutely nails his performance in this show. But that approach is exactly why I think Band of Brothers resonates so well. Instead of having one main character, that we experience the events of the series through their perspective or lens, what this show does is have full episodes from the perspectives of different characters. And not characters you'd expect either. For example, in episode 3, Carantan is mainly from Blythe's perspective. Before this episode, we don't really even get introduced to Blythe. Then, in episode 4, Replacements, you get the character Bull getting more screen time and character development. Then in episode 6, Bastone, it shifts to mainly be Eugene, the medic story. Then in episode 7, we see Lipton's mindset. And then finally in episode 8, Webster becomes the center focus. Even though each of those episodes use a different character to showcase, that doesn't mean they are the only focus of the episode. Characters like Garnier, Buck, Nixon, Joe Toy, and so on are sprinkled in throughout episodes, and each have moments that really flesh out their characters. The show can do all of that because it isn't trying to tell any one person's perspective or story. Instead, it's the story of Easy Company. The show wants to bring you into that company and experience the company's journey from basic training all the way to the end of the war. And that is why I think people really resonate with the characters and the show. They feel a connection to the journey these men went on, and an investment into their stories, at an individual level and at a company level. When you watch it, it almost feels as if you are a member of Easy Company, and going on this path with them. It is wildly impressive how a show could have so many different characters, but never feel like it was too bloated with people, that it became hard to follow. Each character is provided with unique scenes that help the viewer understand who is who, as well highlights these characters' motivations in a way that makes it easy for the viewer to grow attached. I think the show is able to accomplish this because of the clear progression of story. By starting with the characters at basic training, the viewer is brought in at the perfect spot. It may seem like a boring episode to some, but it serves a great narrative purpose for the viewer. Because of that start point that gets you acclimated with the characters, once they are in combat, you can figure out who is who in the chaos, which makes the combat scenes so much more impactful. A lot of shows and movies that depict military combat, that is their biggest issue. During combat scenes, everyone looks the same, and it gets hard to follow who is actually in danger. Band of Brothers solved that issue brilliantly. Also, along with story structure, I love how they start each episode with the real members of Easy Company talking. For one, it's great added context to remind the viewer that these events are true and were experienced by real people, but also for the sake of history. It is great to have these video interviews for future generations, because unfortunately, the greatest generation's numbers are dwindling with time. And so many of their legendary stories were not recorded on video, unfortunately. And so Band of Brothers will be great for posterity. The next factor I want to highlight is audio and visuals. Band of Brothers does a fantastic job with practical special effects to make the combat feel as real and as authentic as possible. The combat scenes never feel over the top or exaggerated. They stay grounded and immersive. That is why you can watch this show that's from 2001 today and still feel like it's not dated. Imagine that, a 20-year-old show can age this well. Remarkable. 
truly the fine wine of TV shows. A specific callout I want to mention to highlight this factor is the artillery bombardment scene from Episode 7, Breaking Point. When Easy Company gets near the town of Foy, the German forces use artillery to hit the American positions. In this scene, the show truly captures the raw terror as well as the destructive power of those artillery blasts. But the whole time, it stays grounded. As heavy as the explosions are, it never ventures into that Michael Bay territory, where the blasts start to look like firework sparks. Find the cover by the box That's just one example though. Another good one is when Winters and his men assault the guns at Brecourt Manor. The show does a great job of portraying the whistling sound as bullets snap tree branches. Honestly, every time a scene shows the men of the 101st running towards an MG42, I'm stuck with this odd feeling. And that is exactly how you want viewers to feel when watching combat scenes. The Band of Brothers producers truly nailed the audiovisual elements for this show. The final factor I want to cover is plot dynamic. In Band of Brothers, episodes have central themes. And the show sets up those themes well by having the real-life Easy Company characters talk about that episode's theme in the intro to the episode. An example of this is in the episode 3, Karen Tan, which centers around Blythe in his fear in combat, leading him to become overwhelmed and essentially paralyzed, unable to move in combat. Throughout the episode, Blythe interacts with different members of Easy Company, who coach him on how they deal with the terror of combat. Welsh tells him to treat combat like a game, and uses a football analogy to make his point. Instead of letting his mind wander to all these different possibilities, just focus on the immediate goals. Basically, he tells Blythe he needs to compartmentalize things. It's a game, Blythe. That's all. Hell, we're just moving the ball forward one yard at a time. Spears, on the other hand, has a more morbid approach. He tells Blythe to accept that he's already dead. That way, he can operate effectively as a soldier. In that mindset, basically, Spears has embraced the worst fear that a soldier can have. And by simply accepting it as a reality and moving on, he can now focus on what he can control and won't become overwhelmed by that possibility. The only hope you have is to accept the fact that you're already dead. And the sooner you accept that, the sooner you'll be able to function as a soldier is supposed to function. Without mercy, without compassion, without remorse. All war depends upon it. And then there's Winters, who really approaches combat more as a duty. It's about getting the job done. Focus on what you need to do and block out all the other noise. Winter's support and his lead from the front approach eventually gets Blythe to become an effective soldier. Interesting note about that episode though, at the end of the episode, it says Blythe died of his wounds in 1948, but in reality, that's not true. Blythe actually died in 1967 of renal failure. Subsequent editions of Ambrose's book have corrected this, but for some reason, the show just never has, which is odd. It was probably really weird for Blythe's family to watch Band of Brothers. All right, back to themes. Another episode that presents a great theme is episode seven, Breaking Point. In that episode, the theme of leadership is brought up and what makes a truly effective leader. They show leaders who yell too much or leaders who lack confidence and make mistakes, but more than anything, they focus on Dyke and how his biggest leadership flaw is just not being around, making the men of Easy Company feel abandoned. The episode has an amazing conclusion. When Spears relieves Dyke in the middle of Easy Company's assault on Foy, he takes control and leads from the front, which the men of Easy Company gravitate towards. All right, I want mortars and grenade launchers on that building till it's gone. When it's gone, I want first to go straight in. Forget going around. Everybody else follow me. Yes, sir. Another good call out, in that episode, they also highlight the mental effect combat takes on a person. Buck, who is portrayed as the strongest guy, ultimately gets burned out. And that's not meant to shame him in any way. Fighting in combat affects each person's mental state differently, no matter how strong or capable of a soldier you are. The show does a good service to showcase how tough the mental side of war is, especially on even the strongest people, and poignantly notes that no one in Easy Company ever thought any less of Buck. 
The last thing I want to mention about plot dynamic is how the show does a great job of using dialogue to explain things. My two big examples are in the lead up to D-Day. They show what Easy Company's D-Day objectives are by having a company-wide planning meeting to go over it. Rather than relying on voiceover to just explain away the airborne objectives on D-Day, they use the characters in a realistic and organic way to tell the viewer. As well, when the airborne men of the 101st are getting ready to load up onto their C-47s, Joe Toy complains about how much equipment they have. What's your point? You know, they stop ways as much as I do. I still got my shoot, my reserve, shoot, my Mae West, my M1. This may seem like a small detail, but it's very accurate that airborne soldiers carried a ton of equipment. And I love this kind of subtle way of incorporating historical accuracies into the dialogue of the characters. It feels organic and natural, and shows a true respect for history and attention to detail by the showrunners. Now, I want to go into the three episodes that resonate most with me. That doesn't mean they're the three best, but just the three that really hit home most for me. And so, your episodes that hit home most are probably different. First is episode two, Day of Days. The reason this episode sticks with me is because the real life airborne operations for D-Day can be a little buried to history. People cover them, yes, but the visual component of this historic operation is really lacking. There isn't a lot of film or photos of the actual event, which, you know, isn't surprising considering it was a nighttime combat jump. While the landings on the beaches of Normandy have plenty of footage to watch, so they can tie to people's memories a little bit better. And it also helps for the Normandy landings that the Omaha Beach landing has the iconic representation in the movie Saving Private Ryan. And so when most people think of D-Day, their minds immediately goes to the amphibious landing portion and not really the airborne attacks as much. And so this show becomes the best and really one of the only representations in media of what it actually was like on that night. The scenes where the viewer gets to see those paratroopers drop into heavy fire and then land into a dark field hoping to find a friendly nearby is pulse pounding. This show absolutely nails the drama of that legendary operation. Day of Days doesn't just capture the feeling of that nighttime combat jump though. It also adds in good historical tidbits, like how the C-47s became off course. In the episode, you see the cloud banks and then the hectic fire once the planes emerge from it, causing the pilots of those C-47s to lose their bearings and take evasive action. Then in the chaos, they just hit the green go button at their best guess where the landing zone was. I just love that a show that is meant to entertain can also inform in such unique and subtle ways like that. My next episode is number six, Bastogne. The Battle of the Bulge is iconic, and the performance of the men of the 101st in that battle is the stuff of legend. But what I love most about this episode is that they took an underrated aspect of warfare and gave it a prime focus. Medics. Medics in a lot of war movies or shows are usually in a supplementary role. This episode changes that, and even though an epic battle is going on, the showrunners chose to highlight a man that the members of Easy Company were lucky to have, Eugene Rowe. Eugene, or Doc, appears here and there before that episode, but in number six, you get to really see what makes him a fascinating character, and how truly wild the job of military medic is. For the job, you have to run into combat without a weapon and perform life-saving procedures while hoping you don't get shot. Wild stuff. And I am so glad they chose to give Eugene his own proper episode. As well, this episode showcases the brutal pain of attachments in a war zone. In this episode, Eugene meets a nurse named Renee at a hospital in Bastogne. In usual TV or movies, the story would then start to blossom into a love story. However, Band of Brothers is meant to show warfare and its effects accurately. And to really hit this home, instead of becoming a love story or a blossoming friendship, that nurse actually dies near the end of the episode. And I think that is so powerful because in a war zone, one moment a person is your friend and you are really connecting with them, and then the next moment, boom, they're gone. No rhyme, no reason. And to cap off this amazing episode, when a soldier needs a bandage, the only one Eugene has is the scarf of that nurse Renee. And he has to ask himself, should he give up the only memento he has of her? Eugene knows that she wouldn't want him to not help an injured soldier just to keep a memento. And so the only thing that he has to remember Renee, he rips up and uses as a bandage for his injured comrade. 
That moment might be my favorite in the entire show, actually. Powerful, yet subtle. Just damn good storytelling. The last episode that really sticks with me is episode 9, Why We Fight. This is the most powerful episode in the series. It showcases the truly horrific consequences of the Nazi regime and the Holocaust. Band of Brothers plays the exact right tone for this episode. It never tries to go for pure shock value or tries to make you feel any one single emotion. Instead, it evokes a variety of different emotions and feelings, starting with shock and horror and then amplifying to rage before finally settling in on a solemn contemplation that how did we get to this point in human history really makes you reflective and think. Episode 9 gives a really good perspective on why World War II was fought in the depths of pure brutality that Nazi Germany descended into. This is a type of powerful episode that will be used in history classes for many, many years to come. All right, let's wrap this up. With all TV or movies I cover, I always like to give a rating, you know, one out of 10. At first, when I was thinking about what to give Band of Brothers, I was gonna try and not give it a perfect 10 because obviously a 10 out of 10 would mean a perfect score and nothing's really perfect, right? But then the more I thought about what I would change if I could change anything about the series, the more I actually couldn't come up with anything. Any changes I could come up with would just be changing for the sake of changing or nitpicking and would most likely just take away from the greatness of this show and not add to it. And so because of that, I have decided to give this a perfect 10 out of 10. Band of Brothers earned that 10 out of 10. It is truly a masterclass of storytelling. And if you haven't watched it yet, you really need to.